Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Once again, welcome to MSB lecture series on main group chemistry. Uh, in my previous lecture, uh, I started discussion on uh, graphite and single layers of graphite is called graphene and how to generate carbon nanotubes from graphene. So, let me continue from where I had stopped. The structure of carbon nanotube also known as NCT can be imagined as a cylinder formed by rolling a graphene sheet and then closing it on both sides by fullerene hemispheres. So, that means essentially if it is a, a graphene single sheet, okay, graphene single sheet I had mentioned, this is graphite okay, and then if I could uh, uh, take out very effectively single sheet, this is nothing but graphene and this graphene uh, by folding okay, and I can have a, a cylinder, okay, it is called uh, graphene cylinder. Okay. Uh, graphene can be cut into thin stripes or nano ribbons okay, by lithographic techniques. These ribbons are described by their edges either zigzag or armchair. One can join the edges of nano ribbons together to form such nanotubes in several ways. It can also form multi-layer carbon nanotubes in which one layer have by interaction with another one. So, you can also have concentrated you know uh, nanotubes uh, of having different diameters. So, you can see here carbon nanotubes here as I mentioned when we fold a, a graphite sheet we can complete it by uh, clipping these exposed carbon atoms in this fashion okay this is called zigzag or one can also make in this way, this gives a chiral uh, center or one can also make like this armchair, okay, something like this. So, there are several ways in which the clipping of the edges can be performed. Okay, so, this is how a typical carbon nanotube looks like okay. and if I could take a smaller nanotube put it inside, you can see this one. Okay. One, one can play around, you know, these are called multi-layer carbon nanotubes. Okay. So, let us look into another important uh, compound of graphene that is graphene oxide. Graphene oxide formerly called graphitic oxide, oxide is also called graph, graphitic oxide or graphitic acid or acid okay, is a compound of carbon essentially carbon, oxygen and hydrogen in variable ratios. By the oxidation of graphite or graphene using strong oxidizing agents, oxygenated functionalities are introduced in the graphite structure uh, which not only expand the layer separation but also makes the material hydrophilic. You should remember graphene or graphite is hydrophobic, but adding these oxygenated functionalities one can make the material hydrophilic. Graphite oxide is a multi-layer system whereas in a graphene oxide dispersion of few layers or mono layers flakes can be found. That means dispersion of few layers or mono layer flakes can be found okay, something like this. Okay. Uh, of course, one can also put epoxide here or hydroxyl groups can be added or carbonyl groups can be added or even carboxylic groups can be added and you can see here. And now, this is how the dispersion of these groups can be visualized on a single graphene sheet. You can have all kind of oxygenated functionalities okay, on the surface of graphene. Okay. Let us look into the uh, other allotrope of carbon that is diamond. Diamond is a metastable allotrope of carbon. 
in which the carbon atoms are arranged in a variation of the phase centered cubic crystal structure called a diamond lattice. Uh, in, in fact, in carbon what happens every carbon atom is tetrahedral and coordinated to another carbon atom and this network is three dimensional in nature that leads to the formation of diamond. Okay. So, diamond is one of the hardest substance known. The major industrial application of diamond is in cutting and polishing tools and this is how the diamond looks like. So, every carbon atom uh, is binding in a tetrahedral fashion to neighboring carbon atom and this network grows in three dimension to give this kind of structure here. Okay. Cubic structure of diamond can be seen here in this diagram. Okay. Let us look into the difference between graphite and diamond. Density uh, is, uh, is more in case of diamond it is 3.513 whereas graphite 2.26 and electrical resistivity is uh, remarkable in case of diamond 10 to the power of 11 uh, whereas in case of uh, graphite you can see that and standard molar entropy is 2.377 in case of uh, diamond whereas in case of graphite it is 5.740 joules per mole per Kelvin uh, and carbon carbon distance is much uh, uh, longer in case of diamond it is 154 picometer whereas in case of graphite it is 141.5 within the layer and between the layer uh, the separation is 335 picometer. Another important uh, uh, allotrope of carbon is fullerene. It was uh, first reported by uh, three scientists Kroto, Carl and Smalley in 1985 and they showed the presence of C60, C70 as well as C80. A fullerene is a molecule of carbon in the form of a halo sphere resembling a football. Okay. Uh, Okay, or it can be in the form of an ellipsoid or a tube and can take many other shapes. Fullerenes also referred as Buckminster Fullerenes or Buckyballs as it resembles the ball used in association football. Uh, cylindrical fullerenes are also called carbon nanotubes, bucky tubes. Fullerenes are similar in structure to graphite which is composed of stacked graphene sheets of linked hexagonal rings. Unless they are cylindrical, they must also contain pentagonal or sometimes heptagonal rings as well. You can see here uh, fullerene, so it is made up of uh, hexagonal as well as pentagonal rings and also you can see here it is made up of uh, 6 membered as well as 5 membered rings. So, just let us uh, look into one point here, the melting point of diamond and graphite are greater than 3550 degree centigrade, but carbon 60 okay, uh, sublimes okay, between 450 degree centigrade to 500 degree centigrade. Why is this difference? Okay. Uh, melting point of uh, diamond or graphite is greater than 3550 degree centigrade, only only carbon carbon atoms are there. In C60 also only carbon carbon atoms are there, no hydrogen atom or anything else. But here it sublimes at between 450 to 500 degree centigrade. So that means here one should remember uh, what is the meaning of melting point and in case of graphite or diamond melting point means the cleavage of all the bonds associated with diamond. Okay. So, that means uh, we have to strip off all the carbon and we have to take individual carbon atoms. Okay. When we achieve the separation of each carbon atoms, okay, it indicates we achieved melting point. Whereas, in case of C60, C60 is a molecule something like this and in solid state they are arranged in this fashion through some weak interactions. In melting point what happens essentially we are separating them. So, they are held by weak interactions as a result it sublimes at uh, 450 degree centigrade whereas in case of graphite if we have something like this, okay, if it continues the every bond has to be broken and same thing is true in case of a tetrahedral uh, 
okay, uh, carbon atom. Okay, so here essentially we have to cleave all, we have to strip off all carbon atoms from each other to achieve its melting. Same thing is true in case of fullerene, essentially we have to take out this because this itself is a molecule. Okay, so this is the difference between uh, the melting point in case of diamond, graphite and fullerene. Okay, so I have shown you some fullerenes, uh, C20 and C24, C28, C36 and also uh, here this is essentially fullerene in which 12 carbon atoms are replaced by 12 nitrogen atoms. Uh, this is a C48 N12, it is a heterofullerene and C50, C60 and C70. These are some of the important fullerenes. Okay. Now let us look into the reactivity of uh, fullerenes. Uh, fullerenes are formed when an electric arc is discharged between carbon electrodes in an inert atmosphere. Although C60 exhibits a small degree of aromatic character, its reaction tend to reflect the presence of localized double and single bonds. For example, if that is the case, uh, if, if any olefin having a double bond undergoes addition reaction, you can anticipate similar addition reactions in case of fullerene also. In fact, it undergoes addition reactions. The in-like nature of C60 is reflected in the range of reactions such as the addition of an oxygen atom to give an epoxide or addition of ozone at 257 Kelvin to yield an intermediate ozonide like C60O3 or reaction of C60 with free radicals also can readily occur. So, polyhedral fullerenes undergo reversible multi-electron reduction and form complexes with D block organometallic compounds and also with osmium tetroxide. Let me show you some of these reactions here. Let me uh, write some reactions of uh, C60. Okay. For example, uh, if it is treated with F2 uh, at 340, 3 Kelvin for days, it forms C60 F60. Okay. Similarly, uh, ICL is uh, added in benzene at 298 Kelvin, it forms C60 Cl6 okay. and if you treat with bromine liquid at 298 K, it forms C60 B20, Br24 or with controlled addition of uh, Br2 okay, uh, at uh, 298 Kelvin only in benzene or carbon tetrachloride, it can give you C60 Br6. So that means by controlling the amount of uh, uh, bromine we are using, we can either make C60Br24 or one can make C60B6. Uh, similarly, uh, one can also use uh, Br2 at 298 Kelvin in carbon disulfide or CHCl3 chloroform to get C60. Br8. Uh, one can also uh, take fluorine with the sodium fluoride at 520 Kelvin okay, or directly F2 at 550 Kelvin. One can get C60 F46. Okay. Uh, this is the major product. Along with this one, one can anticipate uh, C60 F48 in about 10 to 15 percent yield. So, this indicates uh, some of these reactions of uh, C60 with halogens. One can also perform, as I mentioned, addition reactions. For example, a, 
uh, I would mention something like this uh, C60. Okay, one can conveniently mention like this. So, this one simply if you add ozone, okay, one can one can generate something like this. something like this and of course, once after making this one, uh, if it is exposed to UV light, O2 comes out to form oxide, epoxide okay. or one can take this one and treat with uh, uh, heated to 296 Kelvin. Okay. Uh, O2 can come out here also and one can also get now it, 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 it will be something like this. it will be part of it, it will be okay it, it opens up one CC bond it forms or it can be simply an epoxide something like this it can form okay. And taking C60 directly let us say if we treat this one with this reagent. Okay. Uh, okay. So, N2 will come out here. So, here one can see addition reaction happening here. Okay. So, it is diose compound can be taken and added so that you can you can carry out uh, several reactions ok. Of course, one can also uh, add uh, carbonyls also onto it. You can see here some of these reactions are shown here in this one ok. You can take these radicals and you can add it here or you can take uh, RuCO3 fragment ok or you can take Ru3CO12 you can do addition reaction in this fashion ok. And also one can treat this one with osmium tetroxide in presence of pyridine to form a compound of this type. Okay. So, these are all reactions are very similar to reacting some of the species with a single alkene. That means, essentially they resemble the reaction with an alkene or as simple as ethylene molecule. Okay. So, uh, let us look into the catenation. Catenation is very, very common for carbon then for silicon, germanium and tin among group 14 elements. The much higher CC bond enthalpies compared with those of silicon, silicon, germanium, germanium and tin, tin means that the formation of compounds containing bonds between carbon atoms is thermodynamically more favorable than analogous compounds having silicon, silicon, germanium, germanium or tin, tin bonds on descending group 14. So, orbital overlap becomes less efficient as the valence orbital uh, size increases and they become more and more diffuse okay, as the principal quantum number increases. Uh, for this reason what happens is catenation is less pronounced among heavier group 14 elements. The backbones of saturated hydrocarbons are composed of CC bonds that is their formation depends on catenation being favorable. An additional factor that favors the formation of hydrocarbon is the strength of CH bonds. So, stronger than SiH, germanium hydrogen or tin H bond, so, carbon hydrogen bond is much stronger than any of the hydrogen bonds of the group 14 elements. So, when we look into the catenation, uh, catenation can lead to all kind of polymers in case of carbon whereas, in case of silicon it is restricted to having 10 silicon atoms in the chain. For example, Si 10 H 22 for silicon and in case of germanium one can go up to only 9 germanium atoms in a chain germanium G 9 H 20 for germanium and in case of tin only dimeric uh, uh, compound is known very similar to ethane. And of course, in case of lead with great difficult using very bulky groups one can kinetically control and make a dimeric species okay, having some multiple bond character okay, uh, something like this. Of course, here the structure of this one is very interesting. 
and I will be explaining the structure of this one how uh, th this PB PB distance it is not actually a double bond, it, but it has a double bond character. It is not a conventional uh, pi bond that we come across in case of carbon carbon. It is a different one that I would be explaining those things when I go to the organometallic chemistry of group um, uh, main group compounds and especially while comparing the uh, bonding of uh, tin compounds with uh, lead and other silicon compounds having uh, more than one bond or multiple multiply bonded uh, uh, main group elements. So, this is one example of uh, a, a dimeric uh, lead compound of course, you can see here this PB PB double bond is stabilized by very bulky groups we have 2 6 diisopropyl phenyl groups ok. This is kinetically this PB PB bond is stabilized ok. So, uh, sulfur 2 catenates of course, uh, uh, when we look into the catenation another element in the main group or among uh, ok the elements in the period table that forms a larger number of uh, catenated compounds is sulfur. The first one is carbon, second one is sulfur. Of course, I will be discussing more about this sulfur chemistry when I start discussion on group 16 elements. Nevertheless, let me compare its catalytic abilities since we are talking about catenation of carbon. So, the great variety of molecular forms can be achieved by sulfur, sulfur bond formation or catenation of SS numerous way in which the molecules so formed can be arranged within the crystal. SS bonds are very variable and flexible bond distances can vary from 180 to 260 picometers. Some there is some elasticity is there in the SS bond in catenated compound because of single to multiple bond character. Bond angles can also vary from 90 to 180 that is another interesting feature not only the bond angles even dihedral angles can also vary from 0 to 180 and estimated SS bond energy is 430 kilojoules per mole and the unrestrained SS single bond energy is 265 kilojoules per mole. So, less tendency to stabilize SS bond similar to OO bond and but they are not as stable as carbon carbon bonded compound nevertheless it shows moderately stable catenated compounds. So, catenated halides uh, are another important class of compounds similar to extensive range of hydrocarbons, diverse range of halocarbons are known especially chloro compounds, fluoro compounds as well as fluoro chloro compounds together. Best example being poly tetrafluoroethane uh, that is also called PTFE an extremely stable polymer finding numerous applications and <coughs> this PTFE has something like this the structure ok. it goes and all are fluorine atoms. This is called poly tetrafluoro ethane. So, Pt for silicon a large number of higher halides are known containing chains of silicon atoms analogous to the polysilanes. Germanium, tin and lead form few analogous of the silicon compounds because of the lowest stability of Ee bonds going down the group and the increased stability of the divalent halides. Let us look into the hydrates of group 14 elements. The group 14 elements form tetravalent hydrates EH4 uh, with hydrogen and carbon and silicon form catenated molecular hydrates ok. So, that means, uh, we can see catenated hydrates as well of course, hydrocarbons are essentially catenated hydrates. In case of silicon also we can expect that one having a chain length of 10 ok having up to 10 silicon atoms in the chain and each one is ok having 2 hydrogen atoms. Okay. The relative strength of a CH bond compared to CCL and CO bond and this trend is not mirrored by later elements. 
CH4 is chlorinated with some difficulty whereas SiH4 reacts violently with chlorine. Okay. CH4 is very stable with respect to hydrolysis, but SiH4 is readily attacked by water. Here the reactivity of SiH4 is purely kinetic. SiH4 is spontaneously inflammable in air and although it is the kinetic stability of CH4 with respect to reaction with oxygen at 298 Kelvin that is crucial. The values of delta CH0 shows that the combustion of SiH4 is more exothermic than that of CH4 as I said it is one is exothermic another one is kinetic. Okay, I will I shall explain later when I talk about the reactivity of SiCl4 with respect to CCl4. CCl4 is not uh, prone to hydrolysis whereas SiCl4 can undergo readily hydrolysis. Okay. Uh, so, in addition to their inherent kinetic instability, silanes are difficult to handle because they are very reactive. For example, if you take here this is a typical reaction of a a, a, a carbon hydride or hydrocarbon reacting with oxygen to give water and carbon dioxide. Similarly, if we compare the reaction of uh, silane uh, with uh, oxygen, it gives silica that is SiO2 plus water. So, in fact, both the reactions are thermodynamically favored to proceed towards the right. Okay. Uh, the major differences not apparent in the stoichiometric reaction is the energy of activation which causes the paraffins to be kinetically inert in contrast to the relative silanes. Further complications with silanes arise from lack of conventional synthesis and difficulties in separation. However, compounds n equals 1 to n equals 8 okay, uh, have been isolated including stride chain as well as branched chain. Uh, silanes. Of course, more details are given in this uh, book. I will stop at this stage and I will continue the discussion on hydrates of group 14 elements in my next lecture. Until then, have a pleasant reading of Inarian chemistry. Thank you very much. Vayam Prabha, Digital India, Educated India.